As you all have probably figured out by now, I'm a massive Tolkien fan. What you might not know is that I also happen to love theme parks. There's been rumors for years now about a possible Middle Earth theme park. And with the new reveals of Universal's epic universe, I think there's reason to believe this may someday happen in this very park. Today, I'll explain why and what I think are some of the key considerations in making such an attraction. But first, I want to give a shout out to an awesome attraction in the form of Scum and Villainy Cantina in Hollywood. It's one of my favorite spots in LA and they just launched a new menu featuring an amazingly nerdy drink. It's a great place to immerse yourself in nerdiness without a cover. Now for those unfamiliar, there's been rumors of a Lord of the Rings theme park for at least the last five years. It was way back in 2019 that Universal first announced their upcoming Epic Universe theme park and Middle Earth was one of the properties going around the rumor mill as a possible part of the park. Fast forward to just a few days ago when Universal gave its biggest look yet at Epic Universe, confirming that it will consist of four themed lands. First up, the newest entry in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, familiar to anyone who's been to Universal lately. It's one of the most successful movie tie-in experiences ever seen. Next, there's Super Nintendo World, now, I took my family to the one in LA last year, which was a lot of fun. Though I do think this Orlando one will benefit from a greater acreage. Third, there's a brand new land based around How to Train Your Dragon, a franchise consisting of three films, a couple TV shows, and a new live action film in production. I can't say what's gonna come of the future endeavors, but the three films are some of the most charming and consistently good as far as animated family films go in recent memory. And finally, there's Dark Universe. Not to be confused with the prematurely announced cinematic universe with Tom Cruise years ago. This land will focus on Universal's classic monster movies. It's all held together with a park hub with some attractions of its own. And Epic Universe also features an on-site hotel. Now after this announcement, there's obviously been a lot of focus on what is included in the new imagery and map. But what's also notable is there's definitely still space for more. The new map appears to be pretty dead on with the maps making the rounds over the past few years. And notably, there's still this massive 20 and a half acre expansion pad that represents the biggest acreage of the entire map. If you're one to keep up on theme park blogs and such, and I'll include links to some in the description if you wanna check them out, you'll know that this particular expansion was rumored to be reserved in case Universal were to secure the rights to another quote, Potter size intellectual property. And this is where the Middle Earth rumors have primarily focused. I'll be honest, there was part of me that was still hoping Epic Universe was secretly working on a Lord of the Rings park right now and that it would be a surprise announcement along with the rest of the park. But I still don't think it's out of the question for the future. This huge expansion pad that's nearly double the space allotted for Harry Potter seems a perfect possibility for a Lord of the Rings land. Now this is pure guesswork, but as Epic Universe was constructed over the past five years, two huge business deals took place. Warner Brothers, who owns the rights to the Peter Jackson films, merged with Discovery, and Middle Earth Enterprises, rights holders for film, merchandising, and more for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, was purchased by Embracer. With the rights necessary to make a truly great Lord of the Rings theme park residing with two new owners, it makes sense that a potential deal would be delayed. These things do tend to throw a monkey wrench into things, like how MGM's bankruptcy affected the Hobbit films more than 10 years ago. This is not to say there's a lack of interest here. Warner Brothers knows better than anyone how well such a deal could work out. Their partnership with Universal on the Harry Potter lands show how well the two can work together and how incredibly successful it could be for a beloved franchise. And with the dust having settled for over a year for both Embracer and Warner Brothers Discovery, perhaps it will lead to something happening. But now let's turn to the fun part. And what I hope to be a conversation starter among us fans, what could such a park entail? In one of those articles from 2022, this from Orlando Park Stop, they reported on a rumored pitch involving both Hobbiton and Rivendell. Apparently, there would be a bridge across a river which you would use to travel between these two separate areas. They also mentioned that Rivendell would make use of some giant screen-based windows to give the illusion that the valley stretches for miles. I'll be honest, my initial reaction to the idea of recreating the Shire, even before visiting the real one in person, 
was that it would be an odd fit for a theme park. But reading between the lines here, I think it would probably be a smaller replication and something more to give you a taste of the Shire. Clearly, they're not going to replicate the full 14 acres of Hobbiton as it exists in New Zealand. That would be a lot of lawn maintenance. My guess is we're probably looking at a Green Dragon restaurant slash pub, a few hobbit holes, and maybe a facade that gives the illusion Hobbiton extends beyond and up the hill. No doubt Rivendell would be the big showstopper in this potential land. And while to some it may seem a less obvious choice, I think it's a pretty great one. Aside from the Shire, it's the most popular answer when I ask folks where in Middle Earth they'd most like to visit. And I don't think it was haphazardly chosen as the first Lego Lord of the Rings set in about a decade. A great thing about Rivendell is it appears in both trilogies, and it's a location where a ton of characters can pop up and make total sense. But another thing I love about the choice of Rivendell is how it could be used to incorporate what I think would be the trickiest to do well in a Middle Earth attraction, the rides. In something like Harry Potter, which Universal has pulled off incredibly well, they've made it feel very natural for your integration into this world and the ride you're about to go on. And it makes sense within that world. If a Lord of the Rings park is to be pulled off with similar success, Universal would need to look at the things that make Middle Earth special, not just try to fit Lord of the Rings things into the Harry Potter mold. For instance, it wouldn't feel right tonally for us to be making our way through Moria on a ride and for Gandalf to be fighting the Balrog and stop and be like, my word, what are you doing here? I will help you escape, fly you fools. I've done a lot of thinking about a Middle Earth park over the years, like a lot, a lot. And maybe I'll do a full-on park pitch video in the future. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. But let's just take one rumored ride idea and see how it could work out. The Barrel Rider. This would be a water ride based on Bilbo and Thorin's company escaping the woodland realm in their barrels. Now, rather than using some made-up scenario, what if we as attendees get to live the story? We start by entering Rivendell, and we are welcomed by Howard Shore's ethereal music, beautiful architecture, and park employees in costume and character as elves as we enter the queue. The line takes us to the Hall of Fire, where we find a small bent figure by the fireplace, Bilbo Baggins, who wakes up from his nap to tell us the tale of how he escaped the woodland realm. The lights turn off, Bilbo and the hall disappear, as his voiceover tells of how the dwarves were held captive. With that, the lights in the back of the room come on to reveal prison bars. We are the captives of the Woodland Realm. The cell doors open, and for the rest of the queue, we're sneaking our way through the Woodland Realm, with Bilbo's voice ushering us along. Everything in Mirkwood is oversized, tables, chairs, decor, everything, to make you feel like a dwarf or a hobbit. Animatronic elves in Mirkwood armor adorn the hallways as you make your way through, perhaps catching a glimpse of Thranduil's throne room or other awe-inspiring features, all before even embarking on the ride, where Bilbo ushers you into whatever barrel-themed contraption awaits. Now, this barrel ride could just as easily be part of the Shire portion of the park, with Bilbo being in Bag End reading us this tale from the Red Book leaving Rivendell to include a similar approach with something like Escape from Moria, where we relive the Fellowship's flight from Casa Doom. Or if we want to get something really unique in the parks, but still canon, we could get Gandalf recounting his escape from Isengard as we ride with him upon Gwaihir, then encounter the Nazgul at Weathertop, before finally returning to Rivendell. Now, aside from the structures of Bag End and Rivendell, I think there's some cool ways Universal could embrace things unique to Middle Earth. As I said in my mind, I think it would be a mistake if they simply looked at everything in the wizarding world of Harry Potter and said, okay, now let's do the Lord of the Rings version of this, this, and this. Things like butterbeer and shopping for a wand are unique and memorable things within the Harry Potter universe. And Universal did a great job at bringing those to life. I would expect them to take the same careful approach with Lord of the Rings to find those unique things to that world. Some slam dunk ideas would not only be obvious things like coming up with some delicious Lembus recipes, but things more unique to Lord of the Rings and its history. For instance, makeup sessions that people can book to be transformed into an elf, a hobbit, or a dwarf with facial prosthetics. Spoiler alert, that's one thing from my New Zealand trip you'll be able to see soon enough. 
And while fireworks shows are nothing new, there's been some incredible advancements in drone shows. What if Gandalf's fireworks could feature a true flying smaug over the park at the end of the night as the Shire Party music plays? Again, I could go on for hours tossing around ideas for a Lord of the Rings park, like what a world built around Minas Tirith would be like, or how an Escape from Moria ride would play out. Needless to say, I think there's a lot of potential for an amazing attraction that fans would have a blast with. As with any new adaptation, be it a film, TV show, theme park, you name it, there will be concerns about it being made half-heartedly or as a cash grab. Make no mistake, any such endeavor would be made with the goal of making a profit. But that doesn't mean they can't be done well in a way that honors the world and the wonderful themes of Tolkien that generations have fallen in love with. I look at things like the wizarding world of Harry Potter and see it clearly as a financial success for Universal, but it's also an absolute win for fans of those films and books. It's an entirely different way to immerse yourself in that world and there's so much incredible love and attention to detail that makes them the best theme parks I've personally experienced. And there's a huge potential difference maker, an ace in the hole that I don't think has been talked about nearly enough in theme park circles when it comes to a potential Lord of the Rings park, Weta Workshop. Fans of the films will know it was these wizards who made such incredible magic happen for these films. Sets, props, armor, weapons, prosthetics, effects of all shapes and sizes. It's a company full of people who have not only worked on some of the best effects of all time, but they've continued to live and breathe Middle Earth for well over 25 years. And for those not paying attention, they've recently been flexing their muscles when it comes to immersive and interactive experiences, with things like Weta Workshop Unleashed in Auckland and making the permanent Hobbiton movie set including the recent addition of Hobbit Hole interiors, which are quite frankly jaw-dropping. Weta has also been playing with augmented reality, making one of the best and only games for Magic Leap with Dr. Gordboards. And Universal is already using similar technology on their Mario Kart rides. And let's not forget that all those years ago, Universal worked directly with Peter Jackson when they created a ride based on King Kong. What better way for Universal to allow fans to immerse themselves in Middle-earth than to bring on the very people who brought this world to life on film, and have continued to bring this world to fans every year since. It could truly be a monumental undertaking and achievement in the theme park industry, combining the creative excellence of physical and digital experiences of Weta Workshop, along with the folks at Universal who have so successfully brought another incredible magical realm to life. At the end of the day, I think a Lord of the Rings theme park has incredible potential, and not only makes sense from Universal's perspective, but could offer an amazing experience for fans if done properly. One of the things I adore about the existing Wizarding World locations is the attention to detail, and how much love was clearly put into the creation of them. Middle Earth is probably the only IP out there that could meet the high standard set by the Wizarding World. And should they truly go all out and bring in folks like Weta Workshop and most of all, embrace and capture the sense of adventure, bringing people together in fellowship and transporting fans into a fantastic world as real as their own, it could truly make for one of the greatest immersive experiences in theme park history. I could go on and on when it comes to this topic, but I'll turn it to you. What do you think of a Middle Earth theme park expansion at Epic Universe? What would you want to see as far as rides, food, drinks, and experiences? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I'll be dreaming about running around Rivendell in an elven cloak eating Lembus bread. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.